Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Welcome to Storytime in Space. My name is Serena Anand Chancellor, and I'm on board Expedition 56 on the International Space Station. Again, welcome, if whether you're at home or at school or your local library. Uh, today, we are in the airlock, which is where we do all our spacewalks from on the International Space Station. And I'm next to my two buddies here, spacesuit number one and spacesuit number two. This is where we keep the suits safe in between the spacewalks that we do. Uh, and all our equipment, all these bags and everything floating that you see above me, uh, these are all part of getting ready for our spacewalks. And when we're ready to go, we actually clear out all the stuff behind me and pull it out. And this is what we call this whole big place, our airlock. This little part is the crew lock, and it has the hatch to go outside into space so we can work on the space station. Today, great book, Ada Twist, Scientist by Andrea Beatty and illustrated by David Roberts. So I hope you guys will enjoy this today. Let's get started. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, said not a word till the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around, observing the world, but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and make her big break with the trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day chasing each sound in sight and didn't slow down till she conked out for the night. And there she is, she's sleeping on the dresser. Her parents were frazzled but tried not to freak as Ada grew bigger and still did not speak. Clearly, young Ada with lots in her head would have something to say when it ought to be said. That's just what happened when Ada turned three. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could. Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and simply asked, why? So there she is, she's on top of the clock and she's asking why. Her brother's pointing at her. Why does it tick and why does it talk? Why don't we call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose? Why are there hairs up inside of your nose? She started with why, and then what, how, and when. By bedtime, she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep as her dazed parents smiled at the curious thoughts of their curious child, who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, you'll figure it out. And see what's happening to my sock down here. This happens all the time. There's Velcro for us to keep things on space station. And my sock is stuck to a special tether that keeps us safe when we do our spacewalks. So I had to release it. And if you look at the tops of my socks, they're all fuzzy because they've been stuck to Velcro lots of times. Okay, back to Ada. Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid, whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. Even Miss Greer found her hands quite full when young Ada's chaos wreaked havoc at school. But this much was clear about Miss Ada Twist. She had all the traits of a great scientist. And here she is, she's doing experiments and all the kids are standing back, but she is not afraid. Ada was busy that first day of spring, testing the sounds that make mockingbirds sing. When a horrible stench whacked, right, whacked her right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes. Zowie, said Ada, which got her to thinking. What is the source of that terrible stinking? How does a nose know there's something to smell? And does it still stink if there's no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She'd start at the start where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells, both the stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada thought could be true. The terrible stink came from Dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis too. So what's a hypothesis? A hypothesis is something that you think is going to happen with your science experiment. 
Sometimes it means that something will happen and there'll be a change. And sometimes your hypothesis could be that nothing will change and nothing will happen. That's what's so great about science. So you can see Ada here, she is testing things out on her scientific table and rightly so, wearing her safety goggles. Then, zowie, the stink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two, it's caused by the cat. The cat couldn't make such a stink on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested and tested. The test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, stop. See, Ada's trying to wash the kitty in the washing machine. Do not do this at home, kids. Not a good idea. Let your parents wash the kitty. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair now, by the time we count three. Enough, said her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why, Ada questioned. Her mother said, no. What, Ada queried. Her father said, go. You ruined our supper. You made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. See, she's very sad, going to her thinking chair. She sat all alone by herself in the hall, and Ada once more could say nothing at all. And so Ada sat, and she sat, and she sat, and she thought about science and stew and the cat and how her experiments made such a big mess. Does it have to be so? Is that part of success? Are messes a problem? And while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Ada Marie did what scientists do. She asked a small question, and then she asked two. And each of those led her to three questions more, and some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why, and then what, how, and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. See, she's thinking, she is writing out all her facts. The cat's looking at her kind of funny, but she is thinking and trying to figure it out. Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as they did. What would they do with this curious kid who wanted to know what the world was about? They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. And that's the great thing about Space Station is I can even read upside down. And that's what they did because that's what you do. When your kid has a passion and heart that is true, they remade their world. Now they're all in the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asks lots of questions. How could she resist? It's all in the heart of a young scientist. And as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do? But learn all she can with her friends in grade two. Will they discover the stink that curls toes? Well, that is the question, and someday, who knows? Here's Ada with all her friends in the second grade. The end. Ada Twist, scientist. I hope you all had fun with story time in space. Once again, I'm Serena Annan Chancellor from the International Space Station right here in the airlock with my spacewalking suit buddies. It was great to see all of you guys, and I hope I see you again soon. Bye-bye.
thank you for joining us for Storytime from Space. We hope you enjoyed our story today from the International Space Station. We hope you'll join us again soon for another book reading or for one of our science experiments. Until next time, we look forward to reading together again soon.